Why do some people get addicted to things like opioids while others don't? I'm not addicted to opioids, and yet I took opioids for a period of time associated with a sleep disorder that I struggle with. Maybe you struggle with something like an opioid addiction, or maybe you don't. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the factors that lead to people becoming addicted or more predisposed to addiction. The probability that someone becomes addicted to something like pharmaceutical opioids after they begin a treatment regimen isn't uniform from one person to the next. Instead, it's dependent on both the person's environment and their genetics. Let's start with the environment component. Well, that includes many factors. For example, the frequency and dosage of opioid use. Higher doses, taken over longer periods of time, are more likely to lead to the biochemical changes that result in addiction. Other environmental factors may be related to an individual's personal experiences, such as their history of trauma, or whether that person is struggling in work or at school, and the prevalence of drug usage by peer groups. Statistically, when someone has close friends who regularly take opioids, it makes that person much more likely to develop an addiction. And this is why drug addiction treatments typically include both a medication component and a community component. Medications like methadone are often used to help on the biochemical side, and community groups like Narcotics Anonymous are sometimes used to help on the community side. When it comes to the genetic component, well, that gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. But there are a few genetic markers that have been identified that seem to be associated with an increased likelihood of someone developing something like an opioid use disorder. A genetic marker. A genetic marker is just a particular allele, or even a short stretch of an allele that's associated with a particular condition. And an allele is just a version of a gene. So there are certain versions of certain genes that seem to increase the chances that someone would develop something like an opioid use disorder after engaging in opioid use. This just means that there's a component of addiction that's heritable, passed along across generations. All right, I mentioned earlier that the nature of addiction or the cause of addiction is complex. Environmental factors layered onto genetic markers well, as for the genetic side, we just have to look at which genes cause addiction, right? And how many genes do humans have? Just north of 20,000. But remember, it's not just a certain gene that we're looking for that causes addiction. Remember, we all have the same genes. Instead, we need to identify a certain version of one of those 20,000 genes that somehow contributes to addiction. Okay, how many versions or alleles are there of those 20,000 genes? Well, in total, millions and millions. So how could we possibly know which version of which gene matters most when it comes to something like opioid use disorder? Well, there's one technique that's often used for precisely this purpose. It's called a genome-wide association study, or a, a GWAS. Here's essentially how it works. First, you start with two groups of people. In our case, one group would have an opioid use disorder, and the second group wouldn't. For every person involved in the genome-wide association study, we need copious amounts of genetic information, a large proportion of their genome. Next, let the computers work. But seriously, this is a very computation-heavy step. An analysis is run to see if there are any alleles, or particular gene sequences, that tend to be shared, in our case, amongst the opioid-addicted group of individuals. If so, then there's a possibility that those alleles have something to do with opioid addiction. When this kind of thing is done, there's one gene that often rises to the top. 
And that's a gene on chromosome 6 called the OPRM1 gene, or properly called the opioid receptor mu1. One study found that there's a single nucleotide change in that opioid receptor mu1 gene that corresponds to a 10% increase in opioid use disorder rates. The OPRM1 gene has about 84,000 nucleotides in it. That, for anyone who wants to track, that's four exons and three introns, along with the five prime and three prime untranslated regions. Once you splice out the introns, you're left with a portion of the gene that codes for the opioid receptor mu1 protein itself. And that's a stretch of only about 1,200 nucleotides. Here's where it gets interesting. Individuals who have the nucleotide adenine at position 118 seem to have that 10% increased chance of developing opioid addiction compared to people who have a guanine at position 118. I know, I know, 10% doesn't seem like a very big increase when it comes to someone's risk of developing an opioid use disorder. But remember, this is a complicated condition that's controlled in large part or small part by dozens of alleles across a whole host of genes. So anytime we can identify something that seems to have an impact, well, that's progress. And if you combine that 10% increased risk along with the environmental factors, for some people, undoubtedly, that could be the tipping point between a devastating opioid use disorder or not. I should mention here, there are other versions of the OPRM1 gene that also seem to be linked to a higher chance of developing an opioid use disorder. It's actually a very active area of current biomedical research. In the next video, we'll take a deeper dive into what exactly the opioid receptor mu1 does and how it links to dopamine and neurons in our effort to continue to flesh out the complex nature of opioid addiction. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.